Let's start by differentiating between quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data is information that can be counted or expressed as numbers. Since this data is numerical, it can be used in mathematical computations and statistical tests. This is also the data you'll find presented visually in tables and graphs. Quantitative data can be categorized as either discrete or continuous. Discrete data is that which has a finite number of values, like the number of correct answers on an exam. If the exam has 20 questions, there can only be 20 correct answers. Or, another type of discrete data is that which has a space between a pair of values when visualized on a number line. For example, the number of pets owned is a whole number, two dogs or three fish. There is a space between one and two pets. In other words, you can't have 1.5 pets. Continuous data is that where the possible values fall on a continuum. Usually, continuous data is some sort of physical measure. The number of possibilities depends upon the accuracy of our measuring device. Age and height are both examples of continuous data. One general way to tell if data is continuous is to ask yourself if it is possible for the data to take on values that are fractions or decimals. If your answer is yes, this is usually continuous data. Quantitative data is very valuable and much of public health relies on it for decision making and evaluation. However, it is not without limitations. It cannot predict who will get disease and who will not. Usually, it will not give a solution on how to fix a problem, only identify that there is one. It can help in ranking problems, like disease burden or risk factor prevalence, but doesn't tell us which problems to address first. By itself, it is insufficient evidence to make a decision. Qualitative data continues where quantitative data leaves off. It is the data that describes, explains, and characterizes the subject of investigation using words rather than numbers. It generates the feel or texture of numerical data. It is often used to define a problem or generate new ideas for research or intervention. And it can be very useful to add to quantitative results of a program evaluation. There are several ways in which qualitative data are collected. Focus groups are a commonly used method for qualitative data collection. In this method, a group of people are asked about their attitudes and experiences on a given topic. Questions are asked in an interactive group setting where the participants are free to talk with other group members. Typically, they are led by an experienced moderator. Other forms of qualitative data collection may be interviews with key informants, direct observation, or evaluating archival material like newspapers. Let's think through this example. Say you're interested in the opinions of diabetes program managers in how to market diabetes education to the target population. You may consider conducting key informant interviews with the 12 managers, or you can convene a focus group to capture the group thinking on this topic. This table juxtaposes quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative studies events. It asks how many or how much. Qualitative studies motivation. It asks why. Quantitative is objective, more definitive, providing the proof. Qualitative is subjective. It is exploratory and interpretive. 